Uh, for more analysis on the ICC ruling, we're joined in studio by Ngugi Mwenda, an advocate of the Kenyan High Court. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, this really is quite a setback for Mr. Ruta. Why is this ruling different to that of the Kenyan president, Uhuru Kenyatta, who also has to attend the, well, doesn't rather have to attend those hearings on a continuous basis? Well, um, we have to consider that this is an appeal. Um, and uh, therefore, the, actually, the, the ruling by the trial chamber in Ruto's case is similar to the president's case uh, in, in this instance. The only issue is the discretion, how wide the discretion the, the court has under Article 63.1. Um, the appeal chamber is saying that uh, that discretion is narrow uh, and uh, it is faulting the Ruto um, trial chamber for liberally uh, interpreting that section, that article. Therefore, it is narrowing it down and saying that uh, um, the correct interpretation of that uh, article is that uh, the accused must be present in court unless excused for specific uh, uh, circumstances, which must be considered on a case-to-case -case basis. So it would seem that uh, the Uhuru uh, case uh, also is a blanket uh, uh, excusal, beca especially because uh, it, it comes before the trial, and uh, that is one of the issues that were raised in the appeal. Now, what kind of implications can we possibly see from this ruling on that trial? Well, uh, the implications will just be that uh, Ruto will have to, the deputy president will have to attend all the hearings. And uh, also, there are, it may get complicated because now there will be more applications being made uh, to allow him to leave and, and, and attend to any uh, emerging issues that might uh, occur which given his office uh, may be something that we find will occur more and more often in the future. Now, we've also heard suggestions that ICC prosecutors may appeal that ruling uh, made with regard to the president, that blanket excusal, as you've put it. How likely is that appeal, and, and what would it be like? What would it entail? Uh, I would assume the prosecutor would, uh, is seriously considering uh, appealing. Especially when you look that, uh, at it that there is uh, five uh, uh, judges in the, in the appeal chamber. And when you look at the appeal itself, uh, three of them uh, indicated that yes, there is the narrow discretion. And two of them uh, said there is no discretion at all. So you can see that the thinking of the court and, uh, is that uh, the, it should be a narrow, restrictive interpretation of the discretion, which I think is the position of the prosecutor. Um, and therefore, I would assume that, yes, she is preparing an appeal. Now, looking at the efforts the AU has put at having these cases deferred, will their spirits be dampened considering this uh, latest ruling in that appeal? Well, um, that's an interesting question. I think um, instead of their spirits being dampened, I think they, they would be uh, in high gear now to, to move uh, for deferral because uh, this decision gives them um, more ammunition in the sense that uh, if you read uh, the, uh, the opinion by Judge Ebo Esuji, um, he is looking for middle ground, a compromise, which was sort of diffusing the, 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 the position taken by the AU. Therefore, we would expect that uh, this uh, puts more fuel in, in the fire. And uh, especially uh, the concerns that Judge Ebo Esuji was uh, was putting across the concerns of the African leaders. And therefore, he was saying that the decisions that are made have to uh, take into effect the opinions of African leaders. All right, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very much for your time. We're speaking there to uh, Mr. Ngugi Mwenda, an advocate at the Kenya High Court.